Since 1997, Apollo IT is providing customized real-time simulations and modeling expertise to engineers and researchers around the world who want to make innovative ideas a reality. Today, I invite you to join us in a tour at Apollo IT office for you to meet some of our experts and discover our latest achievement. So it's a pleasure for me to introduce you our first engineer. Uh, Sayed, please come join us. Hi, Pierre Francois. Hey, Sayed, how are you? I'm good. Can you uh, introduce a little bit uh, about yourself, uh, what you do at Apollo RT and uh, what we're going to see? Sure. So my name is Sayed Kasim Ali. I am the team lead of the distribution and generation team within the access division. Today, we'll be showing you our four quadrant amplifier and the microarray test bench. The amplifier is part of that and we'll show it to you in our PHIL lab. Let's take a look. Thank you. Introducing the microgrid test bench that we have. This is one of the variants of the microgrid test bench. It has the four quadrant amplifier. Uh, it's DC supply. It's connected to the real-time simulator. In this case, the OP4510 via the SFP link. There is a Aurora protocol implemented within this guy and the amplifier that allows them to communicate. Uh, this test bench specifically also has the Imperix power module and uh, the Imperix filter box. It allows you to create complex power electronic systems using their modular two-level uh, arms. So this test bench was made uh, to emulate and simulate uh, AC and DC microgrids. Uh, we are showing a, a special case of uh, a DC network emulator with a DC DER emulator. Uh, so the first group, first amplifier group, uh, emulates a network. A DC network produces a 50 volt uh, DC voltage out at its output, and the second amplifier group acts as a storage DER, which is capable of absorbing or sourcing current. So on the scope, we see a step change on the current controlled uh, DER emulator. So the step change is from sinking current to sourcing current. So the blue one shows the, shows the group two, or the current control DER current output. And the yellow curve shows the network emulator current output. So we see a step change from minus five to plus five. Hope you like the demo. So that's it from my side. Wow, Syed, that was a very instructive and inspiring. Thank, Thank you very you. much for this demonstration. I would like to know, Syed, um, what is the main uh, research uh, application that you could do with the microgrid test bench? Well, the microgrid test bench can be used uh, to test uh, different microgrid controllers, the design of microgrid controllers, the uh, microgrid protection systems, and even uh, the, the, the integration of the microgrid with uh, uh, a larger power system. Okay, good. Uh, thanks again, Syed, for, for this nice demonstration. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. So let me introduce you uh, our second guest, uh, Mr. Jérôme. Jérôme, please join us. Hi, Pierre-François. Hey, Jérôme. So, Jérôme, you're working on a major development at Apollo RT. Mm -hmm. Can you introduce a bit yourself and, and this major development, please? Mm -hmm. For sure. So I'm Jérôme Leland, and uh, at Opal, I'm the team leader of the UI UX team, and we are dealing with all the, the new user interfaces and user experience. So we did a quick video showing you this brand new product, the Opel RT Schematic Editor, and we're going to demonstrate a few of our latest features. So let's take a look. For a few years now, we have been focusing on understanding and improving what the user experienced when using our core software, RT Lab and HyperSim. So we decided to rethink entirely how we design our solution by involving our most talented and advanced user during the design phase and by getting the constant feedback from them. While doing so, we decided to first put our efforts on what is at the center of the user journey, the simulation model. So we filled the gap in the Opel RT ecosystem by creating a brand new product, the Opel RT Schematic Editor. The most important thing is to have the easiest, smoothest, and most intuitive user experience when drawing a schematic. If you are a student or an electrical engineer, you should not have to read the user manual to draw your schematic. OK, let's add the doubly fed induction machine. As you can see, you have access to all the parameters in the sidebar in a comprehensive way. Want to measure the current going through this signal? It should be as simple as dragging and dropping an ammeter on the signal. 
and voila, we got a circuit ready to be simulated. Now, let me pick a simulator to run on. Let's choose an OP4200. Then, I can choose which firmware is best suited for my circuit. As you can see, this one can operate two induction machines within a simulation. The great thing is, my circuit is now contextualized with this platform selection. So if I want to send this current measurement to an analog output of the OP4200, I can quickly configure it from this sidebar as well. To make sure you keep track of the inputs and outputs you are using, you can check the diagram or in the I.O. summary panel as well. What makes Operati the leader of real-time digital simulators is the computing power of our hardware platforms and the speed of our solvers. The circuit will be deployed on an FPGA without any prior need of FPGA programming knowledge, thanks to our super-fast EHS solver, which is part of the EFPGA SIM solution. You just let the software do the coding part for you. We have exciting new features coming in the next few months, as we are working now on letting the user interact more with the simulation and acquire and visualize data. So please stay tuned for the next updates. Thank you, Jerome. It was uh, very exciting and inspiring, and uh, we are very proud to have you on board. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pierre-Francois. It was a great opportunity to show you this demo. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Let me introduce you our third expert, Chris, come in. So Chris, can you tell us a little bit uh, what you do at Apollo RT and what we are about to see as a demo? Sure. So my name is Chris Gangananta. I'm a sales engineer at Apollo RT Technologies. Today, we're going to take a look at the new features in HyperSim, such as the uh, PSSC importation and also the power electronics components. OK, let's see that. So with the PSK DLL importation, uh, one of the challenges was that a lot of customers have black boxes uh, that they receive and implementing into HyperSim, we use orchestra co-simulation. So we have a model right here that's able to run a power system network, uh, then it's interacting with the PSK DLL uh, and we're able to really close the loop and run the simulation in real time and really observe the right phenomena with the uh, PSK DLL and also with our on wind turbine type 4 models. Uh, then moving on to the next uh, slide here, uh, we see the PSSC importation capability. Uh, so in this video, we see the user selecting PSSC as an importation platform and uh, selecting a DYR and RAW file and uh, able to click on import and really import the whole schematic of the PSSC model into the HyperSim environment. So HyperSim is able to map out the whole circuit in, uh, in this uh, schematic environment. And then we are also able to see some reports that is available for the engineers. So the reports of uh, the equation used uh, throughout, the uh, throughout the model. Uh, then the engineer can really look at these uh, equations and refer it back to it later. Uh, then we're going to add a POW block. Um, and then after adding the POW block, as you can see, we click on the simulation uh, to start. And then when the simulation starts, we're going to open scope view to visualize the results. So we're doing this by selecting the, some signals uh, at a specific bus, and we're really noticing uh, uh, stable results, and we're able to even to compare the uh, load flow uh, between HyperSim and uh, PSCC, and we're really getting good results from that. So the next step is to, for us to show you uh, the new components PV arrays available in the HyperSim. As you can see right here, uh, this PV array has up to 21,000 commercial PV cell type based on the California Energy Commission uh, list. So a user can select different databases from the uh, component and really click on import the, uh, the database into the model and then they can run the simulation with these different characteristics of the PV while the simulation is running in real time. This gives a huge advantages for our users to really select different type of PVs in their model. Then we're going to go into the VSC controllers that has been uh, implemented in HyperSim. Uh, the VSC controllers, uh, voltage source controllers models, uh, are both switching function and switching devices uh, available in our library. So they're basically simulating power electronics uh, in the CPU itself. So we're using specific algorithms to be able to do that in the CPU and really achieve great results in real time. So we have a model right here. Uh, it's a model that is a uh, two megawatt grid connected PV array. So as you can see here, you have the PV array that we spoke about right here. We have a boost converter and we also have an NPC converter right here. Uh, we have the MPPT controller for the boost and the inverter controller uh, also here. 
On the left, you see the distribution system with the 120 volt transmission system being simulated by supply here. And uh, we are applying a fault on this specific bus. So we're going to run the simulation here on HyperSim. As you know, HyperSim is able to run on our local host PC. The simulation is running. Uh, and we're going to go see the results in Scoview. So I have Scoview opened up right here. And if I click play, uh, we can see the voltages at the different buses. So we see the voltage at the east, the bus, east bus. And we also see the current uh, at, the, um, at the bus, same bus. And we see the DC link voltage in Scoview. Uh, Scoview is also, we can see the control measurements. So we are sending a uh, power of 500 kVA rate as uh, a reference from the inverter control. A reactive power is able to really match that uh, uh, reference that we're setting. We have the solar radiance that we are setting at 1000. And uh, we also have the boost input voltage that is around 640. Going back to the control converter uh, power balance, this is pretty cool actually. You can see that uh, uh, we see the different power uh, balance that uh, are being shown at different stages of the model. So as you can see, uh, we see that closer to the, um, uh, to the, the PV, the, 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 the power balance is much more. So we see the value decreasing as we go on to the, to the feeder. So what we're going to do now, we're going to quickly apply a fault at a specific location and see how that is affecting our circuit. Uh, I'm going to click on trick here and press play again in score view. As I do this, you can see that there is some disturbance in the, in the network. And uh, this, is, uh, this is also shown in the control measurement section in score view. And if you go into the converter power balance section, we see how applying that fault is applying, uh, affecting the power balance throughout the, um, uh, the grid. So that's a quick show of our model that is available actually in our HyperSim uh, uh, example, so anybody that downloads HyperSim from our website is able to go see this model uh, and play with it. So feel free to play with it. I'm going to stop the simulation. So going back to my little set of slides here, uh, we are also talking about the GMTP compatibility. So the GMTP compatibility is a feature that we've been developing for the past few years. It's very important for our users who are using offline tools to use real-time simulations. So what we have done is that we're able to bring the IEEE 39 bus model uh, and the compatibility is done in the lower uh, layer of the code so that the user doesn't have to worry about it. Uh, so there's some few steps that you have to do to bring the model into real time. Uh, of course, we have to add a POW block in the model. We have to replace the switches as well and also set bus voltages for load flow initialization. Then what we can do after is click load uh, start simulation and the simulation will start. And uh, as we, see, we have some results printed out for you here, and as you can see here, we're able to match really well the results from EMTP to the one in HyperSim. And uh, we also see the fault uh, being applied at a specific, uh, a specific circuit breaker, and we can see the current that are being uh, able to match EMTP. So uh, what's, what's next for this? So the next uh, steps for us is that we're working on a user guide uh, or other tools to help users bring more complex model to real time uh, in the simplest manner possible. All this is to save EMTP RV users considerable time by not having to rebuild their model from scratch and allowing them to keep using the same model in both EMTP and HyperSim. Wow, Chris, this is very impressive and a lot of work. Thank you very much for this time. Thank you, PFA. It was a pleasure. Okay, good. And now, our last guest, but not the least. Uh, let me introduce you, Denis. Denis, please come in. Bonjour, Pierre-François. Hi, I'm Denis Champagne, responsible for the operation here at Opal RT. I'm pleased to present you a video where you're going to see how our skilled and dedicated people manage to, to deliver good product on time and ensure quality. Let's see the video. Let's see that. Let me introduce you to the operation here. The first step is the incoming. We do receive parts and we stock them for future use. Some of the parts have to be inspected. Let's go to the incoming inspection. Here's the incoming inspection area. In this place, we basically test and calibrate all our PCBA we receive from our uh, manufacturers. Those parts are critical for the assembly and are custom part for each order that we deliver. Uh, once it's tested, 
these units go back to stock and to be kitted with a specific job. Any order that you guys give to us, we do create some work orders to make sure that we follow the assembly properly and each kit is, is dedicated to a work order. Now, once we got the kit made for a specific work order, every kit created are delivered to a specific assembler. We got uh, all our assembler here are trained as per the IPC standard and they follow instruction that our NPI groups do prepare for them coming from uh, doing the interface between R&D and the production. So every document are available from, the, from online and control as per the ISO standards. For more complex job, we do uh, assign those to our senior assembler. Wiring diagram, we got uh, skilled technicians here working on, on one of the complex units for you guys. For controlling, one thing for each assembly that we perform, the assembler at the end of the assembly must fill one of the checklists, the wiring, the components, the serial number, pictures of all the assemblies also, and this is part of the data that we collect for each assembly. On the, the test engineers are responsible to do the bit stream, do the model, make sure that we have a, a complete system. As you can see, we might, might have several units put together and linked and make sure that all the systems meet these customer requirements. Uh, at that stage, all the data for the, from the assembler is tied to the unit and we keep record of those. So the next step will be the final uh, visual inspection. We do have a complete checklist verifying the assembly, making sure there's no scratch, there's no defect on the unit, that we have the proper serial number for all the critical parts on the system. I validate if there was some change in the order in the process of assembling it, we will capture it here. Once it's fully inspected here, then it goes to the packing area. In this area, again, we validate for the shipping document. We make sure that we have all the transportation. We coordinate with transportation. And the system is ready to go for you, to your premises. That concludes the travel of a system from Opal delivered to you guys. We working hard. We have a very skilled people to make sure that we have the best simulator available for you at the best cost possible. Thank you. You have a great team, Denis. Thank you very much for this movie. My pleasure. Innovation, as always, inspired us to go beyond. Many of our achievements are due in part to the work of our clients, colleagues, partners, and collaborators. We directly contribute to bringing our real-time simulator technology to the next level. Our main goal at Apart is to help you to make innovative ideas a reality. We strive to build better products and better solutions so that you can build a better world. We see future where energy production is increasingly cleaner, more robust and more resilient. Please stay well, stay safe and thank you very much.